my name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today, in a completely unexpected turn of events, we are going to be talking about Belle Delphine. Now, I realize that many of you on my channel may not be aware of who Belle Delphine is, so before we even get into the subject, I guess I'll first just discuss who the heck is Belle Delphine. Belle Delphine is an online content creator that originally got started around 2015-2016 with a makeup tutorial on her YouTube channel. From there, over the next few years, she really transitioned, especially on Instagram, to making content that focused on cosplay with something of a lewd element behind it. She started to gain notoriety from the faces and poses that she would use in these photo shoots, as well as some of the bizarre stunts that she would pull either in the photo shoots or in YouTube videos. I think the first time I remember hearing about Belle Delphine was because she put googly eyes on a dead octopus and used it during a photo shoot, and we will be revisiting that point here in a moment. I believe she really, really got famous for a lot of people on the general platform of YouTube because she eventually got so famous that she had a Patreon she attracted primarily a lot of younger men to follow her that liked being teased by her lewd content, and she eventually decided to profit from that by selling jars of her bath water, which was such an amazing move. Like, I have to applaud it because of what a unique idea that is, and I'm sure that she made a lot of money from doing that. Now, curiously enough, around the same time, or shortly afterwards rather, she kind of disappeared from the internet for almost a year. Nobody heard from her, nobody really knew what was going on. Eventually it surfaced that she may have vandalized someone's car because they stole her hamster at a party and then she was arrested because of that. And no one can really verify if this actually happened or not, but for whatever reason, Belle Delphine was absent from the internet for quite a long time. And then earlier in 2020, she made quite the comeback because she had always been making kind of lewd, teasing content for people. She was really kind of known as a troll, especially for people like Philip DeFranco or H3H3. Like, for whatever reason, this girl just happened to have a really specific niche and market as a lewd content creator, and that really worked for her. But eventually, she started to transition kind of into potentially being more of a full, like, sex content creator. And she teased people by posting sex videos on Pornhub, which were all with very punny names that seemed to allude to actual sex acts, but the videos themselves were just like things involving cardboard cutouts or just a total joke. And people thought this was really funny or they got really, really mad at her for tricking people. And from there, it seems that she actually decided to transition into actually making full-on pornography. I believe it was on Christmas Day of this year she leaked her own sex tape, which included acts that I believe she did with her boyfriend. And now, most recently, she has started to go even more in that direction on her OnlyFans, posting more and more what people would call hardcore pornography on there and on other platforms as well. Now, before we get into the current controversy with Belle, I think I should first share my opinion about Belle, so that way you guys can kind of calibrate and adjust my opinions based on what you perceive my bias to be. I have very mixed feelings about Belle. On the one hand, I can kind of relate to her in a way because we have very similar body types. And I, I do appreciate when I see people that have a similar body type to me, kind of thin, not really anything going on in the bus department, like being seen as like attractive and desirable because especially in the last like, five or 10 years, thanks to the Kardashians, it's very much been the opposite body type that has kind of been glorified and seen as like the sexual goal, right? So I, I do like it when somebody of like, you know, she's still white, she's still skinny, but like a body type that's like mine 
also being seen as sexually desirable is a nice thing that I like to see happen. But at the same time, I never really liked Belle, and honestly, this is why. It was the thing with the octopus and her use of animals in general in her lewd and sexualized photo shoots, something that I'm worried she's going to take going forward in her career because it's kind of part of her brand now. I am vegan, but I found this kind of revolting even before I was vegan. I, I just, I find it so strange to use either alive or dead animals as like part of a sexualized photo shoot or a video, even if it's supposed to be funny and you put googly eyes on it. Like, there, I just, I find that so distasteful. And I think she's also done photo shoots with like baby rabbits and other things. And I'm sure she has tons of content that's along similar lines that's behind paywalls on like her Patreon, for example, or even on her OnlyFans. And it just, it doesn't sit right with me. There's just something about it that I don't really like on a personal level. And this isn't a rule that I just apply to Belle because of who she is. I have unfollowed people who do Shibari, other BDSM activities that I otherwise really like and respect, but they've done photo shoots. They've done BDSM activities where they've involved live octopus. They have included snakes. And I'm like, can we maybe not include the animals in our, in our kink, please? Can we, can we maybe make a little bit of a boundary there? Now, and I'm saying that in a joking way because I mean, like people can do what they can do, but part of me kind of establishing boundaries for what I feel comfortable seeing is choosing to unfollow and not support people that I think make content and promote content that I personally find distasteful and to be beyond those boundaries. So that's my bias with Belle. That's my opinion with Belle. So make of that what you will going forward because I normally wouldn't really talk about Belle on my channel. She is not really known, I think, up to this point for BDSM things. She has made posts where she said, like, I just want a boyfriend who treats me like a dog. She's done photo shoots that are very reminiscent of pet play. She has used kind of BDSM elements in her photo shoots, but that's by no means unique to Belle. And up to this point, I can never recall her ever claiming it <laughs> to be BDSM. So not really something that would be on my channel because if you're watching this and you don't know who I am, I am a BDSM educator. I'm a BDSM content creator. I've been making YouTube videos for five years that's focused on that content and I'm in the lifestyle and I've been doing BDSM actively for about six years now. So that's the background with me. That's the background on Belle and the reason why we're talking about her today is she recently posted a series of two photo shoots on her Twitter account with the caption, my ideal or perfect first date and my perfect second date. And people saw this and immediately had a very <laughs> strong, mostly negative reaction to it. And what I wanna do here is I will, I will talk about the images, I will kind of show what I can of them, and I want to discuss both Belle's original post, her response, and people's responses to these photos, because I heard about this because I was listening to Philip DeFranco when I was getting ready for bed the other night, because that's my routine, if you guys wanted to know that, and there was a Belle Delphine story. I think it was the first or second story for that particular episode of the Philip DeFranco show. And I was like, oh my God, like I, I, I can't believe this happened. And I was worried she was gonna delete stuff or people were gonna delete comments. So I stayed up later, I screenshotted everything. I, I made clips of everything that I could. And I literally had trouble sleeping last night because my brain just kept thinking about like how I wanted to address this and what I wanted to say because there are just so many things going on here. So first things first, let's look at the things that Belle posted with those captions. There's a total series of about eight images. And right away, the way that my brain perceives this is I think, oh, this is a damsel in distress photo shoot. This is a bondage purist photo shoot. I have, I have lots of familiarity with those things. Being in the BDSM community, I am very familiar with what those things 
look like. They are classic images for people who are into what we would call Western style bondage and is sort of in the tradition of North American and in UK productions of bondage images. They look very familiar to me. I've seen hundreds of things like this on FetLife, for example, or in the very classic Bizarre magazine. And actually, I'm wearing a t-shirt today that I think is also very reminiscent of this style of bondage. And I think that is what Belle, from my perception, as being somebody in the BDSM community, that is what I think Belle was trying to reproduce with these images, at least the first set of them, and I think she did so successfully. Now, the second series of images, I think it is still somewhat like that. The the angle I get from these is more like kink.com or like water bondage. That was something that kink.com did for a while. They literally had <laughs> a whole series of videos and things they produced where it was literally just like, underwater bondage and people drowning in bondage and that was like kind of the kink that they represented so these images are also somewhat familiar to me now there's one image among these that i have a lot to say about and we will touch on that in just a moment because i think that's kind of worth a whole separate discussion so to some extent these images are familiar to me as a bdsm person they don't really seem out of line or unusual for bdsm content for the most part but the issue is Belle does not market herself, at least up to this point, as making BDSM content, as even being an 18 plus only account. And she didn't warn people or say, these are what these images are, you know, scroll away if you don't want to see them. There was no trigger warning, as is what is often used on places like Twitter. And people really, really took issue with that. That's the first thing I want to discuss with people's responses, is a lot of people said, Belle, why didn't you put a content warning on this? And I agree, I think that she should have put some kind of content warning on this because it's not what she would usually produce. I will put some images on screen of some things that are typical for Belle that she posted close to when these things came out on Twitter. And usually it's kind of like kawaii, like sort of cute and pink. It can be a little bit lewd, it can be silly, it can be <laughs> meme references. There are things that are more sexual on Twitter that she has started to post more recently, things like censored videos that are featured sharing sex acts with her boyfriend, but nothing that's contained this overt level of kink. And again, nowhere in any of the descriptions on any of her profiles, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, anywhere, she never says that she's 18 plus only. She doesn't even say that she's a sex worker or a sex content creator. She doesn't say that it's not safe for work. Nothing like that. Now, her account on Twitter does have a, a sort of I would I call it like a like a soft lock maybe on it where it says this profile may contain sensitive content. I don't know if that was something that Bell had in place before she posted this, if this is something that Twitter did as a result. I don't follow Bell Delphine on social media, so I can't verify to check that. But she does have at least some kind of thing going on on Twitter where this was posted. But the way that Twitter works is you will see things that your friends have liked. You will see popular posts in your timeline. So even if you don't personally follow Belle, even if you don't personally want to see that content, it can still pop up in your timeline, even if it's not your thing. And this is personally why when I use Twitter, I have all of the images set to basically be blurred out, to have sort of a blurred image preview because I do follow a lot of sex workers. I follow a lot of sex content creators. I follow a lot of people that like porn on their Twitter accounts. And personally, I don't always want to see that or maybe I want to check Twitter when I'm in line at the post office and I don't want to show everyone around me or behind me in line what I'm looking at on my phone and the fact that it's BDSM porn, you know? So I have images blurred, which does help, but a lot of people don't have that feature enabled. I don't even know if you can do that on the desktop version of Twitter. That is just what I've done on the mobile version. And it's something that helps, but it doesn't necessarily eliminate the problem or excuse Bell for not putting some kind of content warning on that content. Because if you're a sex content creator, if you make lewd content, if you make BDSM content, like people will have an expectation based on what content you have created in the past, right? Which for her, again, has been lewd, 
kind of soft core porn, some sort of like private body parts, some kind of light BDSM things like collars, ears, a tail, maybe something in a caption for example, but nothing to this extent. And I think no matter if you're famous with a million subscribers or if you have 5,000 followers and that's it, like I think you have a duty to kind of inform people when you're doing something that's completely out of character for your profile, especially when it can be so potentially upsetting for people. And I think, you know, people should choose to engage or disengage in, in content that they want to view or not view. But when you're removing that option for them because you haven't told them what's coming and it's not something you've ever really done before, I, I find that to be inappropriate and irresponsible with the size of platform that she has. Because, you know, for example, if I was like, kind of a soft kitten play blog, for example, and I mostly posted really like aesthetic pink photos or like photos of like a saucer with milk in it and things with kind of cutesy captions. And then I suddenly put a jump scare in my timeline. Like most people wouldn't be okay with that. They would be like, hey, you know, this is really upsetting for me or this, you know, triggers this particular disorder I have and I would have appreciated something to let me know that was coming so I could have skipped past it, you know? And I think it's just, you know, a common courtesy of being on the internet on a platform where we don't really have have super tight control over the content we necessarily choose to see. And I can I can see kind of the argument of like, oh, you know, if you don't like it, don't look at it. But in order to know you don't want to look at it, you have to look at it first. And again, especially when she hasn't posted things like this before, I could understand if she rebranded or if she decided to say publicly, hey, I'm going through this change, you are going to see more intense stuff than what I have posted before, here's your warning. If she had said something or made a more solid rebranding effort to tell people this is going to happen, I could say, okay, you know, she did tell everyone who follows her that like hardcore BDSM content is coming, so you can't really get that mad. But it was kind of out of the blue, and I think we have to remember, Belle has gotten her fame from controversy and trolling. And I think to some extent, she sees this as trolling. And she has made kind of joking posts since this, kind of being like, ooh, twig a warning, oh no. And like the video is like of her partner like forcing her to brush her teeth. Or she made a video earlier today, I believe, where it was like, oh no, I heard you hate my content. And then it was like a video of her twerking. Like clearly she knew this would upset people. She knew she could profit from it because of course now like every YouTube news outlet is talking about this even when they're not like sex or kink focused at all. So like she knew this would happen. She knew people would would have a reaction and the disappointing I think part of this experience for me is Belle's response and I think I want to talk about Belle's response first and read it for you all in full and then we'll get into some more of these specific comments that people made about what she posted beyond just the oh you should have had a content warning. So this was posted the day after the original set of images went up and the caption says I'm not sorry and here's why. There is nothing wrong with enjoying power play and BDSM where both people are consensual. I think saying because I enjoy consensual non-consent is promoting rape is the same argument that violence in video games promotes violence. I made it very clear in the caption of my photo and anything written about it that I was enjoying it and that it was consensual. I never said the word rape or anything against my will. This is what other people have put onto it. I enjoy the idea of being tied up and used with my consent, obviously. Another thing that people have said is that I'm trying to dress like a child, which to me is insane. I felt like dressing vintage that day and even styled my hair in a beehive that was very common for women of that time. All the clothes I wear are made for adults, so the only thing that people can comment on maybe is the fact that I'm wearing a cute dress. It's very confusing for me since I see other people dress like it all the time. If it's about how I genetically look, I can't change that and will not apologize for either, nor will I stop being sexual since I am a sexually active adult. No one likes rape. No one wants rape to exist. Saying that I support rape is the same as saying that 50% of the female population does because if you look at the statistics based upon this from studies done over the last 30 years, including new studies, 31 to 61% of women have power play slash rape fantasies in the exact same way. 
I consented to being tied up and to having rough sex. I am not apologizing for anything. What I did wasn't wrong and much more normal than people think. Look at one of the most common sexual outfits and fantasies, the schoolgirl. If you wear that, are you promoting pedophilia now? The front page of porn websites include fantasy scenarios of every different kind you could think of. Incest, stepmom, teacher, etc. Just because someone likes the fantasy of something doesn't mean they want it in real life. Sex is complex and explorative, but it should always be consensual. I post a lot of sexual stuff to my Twitter because it's for my OnlyFans. People who are sensitive to kinks and sexual content shouldn't be following me. I made it very clear that I'm posting hardcore porn. Staying true to myself and my beliefs is more important than following the tide of angry, angsty people on the internet. Can you imagine a world where people actually posted how they individually felt rather than how their whole cancel culture shitty community felt? It would be a better and more productive one. As for people saying I should have used a trigger warning on my whole Twitter slash OnlyFans, have constant themes of kink since I do porn as a job, and I will not put a trigger warning on all of my posts. Do not follow me if you require trigger warnings before posts. P.S. It was the best sex I've had in months, and I'm planning to do it again very soon. Heart emoji. So first things first, let's talk about people who said that Belle was trying to dress up as a child. Now, notice when I did my commentary, on Belle's photos, I never said that she looked like a child. Maybe this is me because I know what it's like to have that body type and to try and dress girly. Like people just perceive you as looking childish because if you wear anything floral or cute or kind of retro-y, people are like, oh, I get it. You're trying to do like a pedophilia thing, right? And it's like, no, that's, literally not what's happening. I can kind of see how the particular items she chose kind of skirted that line. I can see how people might perceive it as being, oh, this is attempting to dress like a child, even if all the clothing that she wore was meant to be worn by adults and is adult fashion. It looks like what I would call nymphette fashion, which is fashion that's inspired by the movie adaptation of the book Lolita. That is very, very much what it reminds me of, that whole era of Tumblr. And that in and of itself is a fashion idea, is, is something worth discussing, but I'm not a fashion channel, so we're not getting into that today. But I think it's, it's both important to think about the intention behind something and the perception of something. I do not perceive this as trying to look childish. I think it looks youthful. I think it reminds me of like the 60s and 70s and kind of that whole like hippie flower child youthful kind of aesthetic. That is kind of what it reminds me of. And her makeup and her hairstyling actually kind of reminds me of Ariana Grande. So I, I, I think it is something that people, if they wanted to, could choose to make it seem like it was meant to be childish on purpose, but that was not even something on my radar at all when I originally looked at these images, because again, they remind me of Bizarre Magazine. They remind me of damsel in distress pornography, and that type of look is very common, even if it's not about trying to make somebody look like a child. Now, the big part of the response that I haven't mentioned up to this point, and again, just content warning, because we're gonna talk about rape and rape fantasies here, that is the big part of what a lot of people said in their responses and I will I will show a selection of them on screen now but lots of people basically said bell this is wrong this is promoting rape or rape culture and the young men who follow you are going to see this and think this kind of activity is okay to do with partners and and you should take this down basically and it's it's a difficult subject, right? Because a lot of people who, who mentioned it made them uncomfortable, people who thought it was inappropriate, have had their own struggles and stories with rape and sexual assault. And they are completely allowed to not want to engage in this content, to find it distasteful. You don't have to like BDSM, you don't have to like kink. And I completely understand people who don't want to interact with it. But at the same time, I think that it's, maybe a little bit of an outlier to say things like, you know, this is directly promoting like rape and sexual assault and things like that and normalizing it. Because from my perception, the images that she showed, especially with the first set, were very 
highly stylized. They looked very fantastical to me. They looked like pornography, not like a realistic kidnapping scenario. And I, I think the emphasis on those photos was on the elements of being tied up and the bondage and, and things like that, rather than on like some kind of realistic sexual assault scenario actually happening and taking photos of that and putting them on the internet. So I can see them through the context of it being kind of fantastical and, and being a porn fantasy. And I do think that Belle is right when she says that one of, if not the most common fantasies that cis women have is rape fantasies. Personally, I don't like the term rape fantasy. I think we need to separate the crime of rape from the fantasy scenarios that people engage in because the reality of those crimes and the scenarios that people fantasize about do tend for the most part to be very, very different. Obviously, rape is a horrible crime. Nobody wants it to happen. Belle's absolutely right on that front. What I would call rape fantasies is ravishment fantasies because the core of them is typically about something like being overpowered and controlled by a strong force, somebody being so overcome with lust for you that they can't help but take you, that somebody wants to possess you so badly that they would be willing to commit a crime in order to have access to you. And that tends to be more of the core of it. And it is very, very popular. And I think that you know, saying things in public like this kink is absolutely totally wrong and shameful and nobody should ever even think about anything like this is, is simply going to make people more ashamed of the fantasies that they kind of can't help but having. You know, if it's something where it is going to directly cause harm and danger to others, that is something that requires psychological help. But if it's something where it's just a private fantasy that you're having in your head, like, how much harm is that really going to cause other people when it doesn't involve them and they don't even know what's going on in your brain to begin with? So I think that having ravishment fantasies, completely legitimate, totally understandable, and Bella was right, it is very, very common. And I know people kind of roll their eyes at the whole like, oh, this is kink shaming thing, but to some extent it is, right? This is what kink shaming looks like in the wild, in real life. It's when people come out and say in mass, no, this thing is wrong, don't do it at all. And if you do do it, keep it completely private and never mention it anywhere this shouldn't exist. Because that is simply creating a much more difficult scenario to be able to have successful, necessary conversations when things like this come up in the public eye. Now, I think Bell does go too much on the defensive in this response. She basically, you know, kind of breaks it down to, hey, you know, I post porn. If you don't want to see that, don't follow me. If you need trigger warnings, don't follow me. And, you know, it's not entirely other people's fault that other people were upset here. She has not taken the precautions that I think she should have in order to make sure that the content wasn't shown to people that didn't want to see it, right? She says that she has done plenty of work, right, to make sure that people know that she's po posting hardcore porn. Um, hardcore vanilla pornography is not the same thing as alluding to dropping a toaster into your girlfriend's bathtub. Just because one person is okay seeing nipples doesn't mean that they want to see somebody be electrocuted, you know? like. There is a spectrum here and, you know, even within the world of BDSM, right? If you follow a BDSM account and they maybe do pet play again, for example, just to go back to that particular well, if all they post for years is pet play content and then one day they're suddenly showing themselves being buried alive in a video, like you weren't expecting that content. Like, yes, they post sexual stuff. They, they post maybe pornographic stuff. Maybe they just talk about BDSM in general. That doesn't mean you were expecting to see somebody get buried alive. So just saying, oh, you know, I talk about porn and kink. You should have expected this. Like this is a very specific type of bondage pornography, a very specific subset of BDSM. And just because somebody might be okay with you posting yourself you know, nude with a butt plug tail in doesn't mean they're going to be okay with this. And we have to remember, I think as well, that Belle is fairly young still. She's 21. This is really the first time she's posted anything kink related. So 
I think there may be a little bit of like a perception issue on Belle's part. I don't know how active she's been in BDSM activities with her boyfriend to this point. I don't know how long she's had these private fantasies. It could simply be that these things are new and exciting to her. She's been really immersed in them for a while. You know, she's personally used to and desensitized to these images. So she's kind of lost the ability to sympathize with people for whom these images are still quite sensitive. And she may just kind of perceive all of it as being the same because, hey, it's like, it's sexual content and all that's kind of the same no matter where that falls on that particular spectrum. But it's still not an excuse. It would have been so easy to just put 18 plus only, not safe for work, hardcore BDSM content coming soon. It Like literally she makes so much money, she could have hired somebody for like $10 to edit all of that and all of her social media profiles, it would have taken literally less than five minutes. You know, it, it would have been so easy. And I think she seems to be unwilling to admit she made a mistake here. You know, I think now going forward, we know she's going to post more content like this and that it's been such a big media story. I don't think, you know, beyond this, people can really reasonably be surprised when it happens, but Belle is so popular across the whole internet for more than just doing BDSM shit, right? A lot of people know her as being a troll, the girl who sold the bathwater, right? I'm sure a lot of people follow her or know of her because of the fact that she's done those things and people may research her, people may find her account because, oh, I want to know about the girl that sold the bathwater. I want to know about the girl that does all the eggio faces. And just having something really quick in a profile is such an easy way to avoid so many issues. Or especially if you want to do this as like a marketing thing for your OnlyFans, post like censored kind of trolly funny versions of these videos and of these photos on your public Twitter account to lure people to see the real full images on your OnlyFans wherever else she happens to post these images. And she's done that in the past. She has a video up on her Twitter right now that I believe is a video of her sucking her boyfriend's dick and the dick is censored by a picture of Pickle Rick. Like, <laughs> she's no stranger to using trolly, meme things to censor sexual content and I don't understand why this BDSM stuff would be any different. She can make it pretty and aesthetic. She can put like little clip art of, of flowers or anime girls or whatever else she wants over it. Again, so easy, such a simple solution. And I think being young and, and being so well known for so many things, I think kind of created a blind spot for her where again, she just doesn't seem to be able to admit where she made a misstep because I know from following so many sex workers and BDSM accounts and being in that community that like even within our community, it is very normal to have a bio that says 18 plus only, not safe for work, I post XYZ content or individual trigger warnings and descriptions of what's happening in a caption. So if somebody has those words blocked, they don't have to see it. And that's really all I have to say about Belle's response. I. I don't even really want to touch on the cancel culture thing because that just sounds like Belle is upset that people are upset and she's going, oh no, cancel culture bad. And like so many people have talked about that. It's not even worth mentioning. And like obviously consensual BDSM between adults isn't pedophilia. And if you think it is, then like, I don't know what to tell you. So <laughs> moving over those two issues, I think the thing that I want to really dig down on is the one thing that did kind of bother me about Belle's images that I didn't understand why she why she couldn't perceive that people would be upset about it. Because after the first set that she posted, she posted those second date photos, right? And the first image is of like her in a bathtub with her boyfriend kind of like draping a toaster kind of over the edge of the bathtub. Now, my friend Brittany Simon, I don't know if she still has any videos up where she talks about this, but she always tells a story about how the first time she went to a BDSM club, the person who was guiding her into the community specifically warned her against playing with somebody because he likes to put toasters in bathtubs. And that is unusual for the BDSM community, right? I think this particular set of images does hew much more closely to a horror movie scenario or some kind of kidnapping scenario, some kind of sexual assault scenario. And 
I don't think it's defensible to say, oh, this is like typical BDSM when that is like the first image in the set of images. I've been on FetLife for a long time. I follow a lot of people that post a lot of hardcore bondage pornography. I have seen a lot of crazy things. I have seen people on actual spit roasts. I have seen people have their mouths sutured shut in person. I have seen and done and witnessed a lot of things. And actual full body electrocution by putting a toaster or a hair dryer into a bathtub is not typically something that you would see. Now I am sure there are very specific fetishists, very specific people who make content around that where you can find that if you look for it on purpose, but it's not really a mainstream BDSM thing that you would expect to see, you know, casually scrolling through most people's feeds, right? Because of the fact it is very dangerous. Electroplay in general is a fairly dangerous form of BDSM. It's something that requires quite a bit of knowledge about anatomy, about how electricity works in general, and knowing how to use the equipment appropriately. Now, I think there are ways that you can use a toaster during play and have this scenario in a realistic fashion for the sake of creating fear, for heightening the overall kind of element of the scene, without the actual risk of electrocution, right? Th this is just part of an image. Maybe the toaster isn't plugged in. Maybe the toaster doesn't work. Maybe there's some kind of wire that's holding the toaster suspended in air so it could never actually fall into the water to begin with. Obviously, Belle was not electrocuted by a toaster. That was not a thing that actually happened, but the image clearly, I think, could create some difficulties when it comes to understanding the realities of what people do in BDSM because Belle is so popular with so many people that don't necessarily know a lot about kink. There is a particular tweet that I do want to read verbatim to you guys because I, I think it speaks to this point and is something that I want to highlight. It says, the issue isn't having this kink. It's the fact that a lot of males here will see this and think it's normal. They don't know about the safe words, long discussions, and therapy that take place before engaging in a scene like this. They just see rape. Now, I have a few issues with this tweet because as far as I can tell, this person is not into BDSM themselves. The words that they use, like the therapy that takes place beforehand, like, it just sounds like somebody who heard about some of the safety things we have in place for kink and then just kind of misremembered them and put them in a tweet. Now, when I checked these posts, this was the top tweet under her first set of photos. And I think we don't even need to have a gendered element here, right? It doesn't have to be that males are gonna see this. I think regardless of who from Belle's audience is seeing this, like if they're not familiar with BDSM pornography and the tropes of it, like it's, gonna be a little bit confusing to see some of these images because they're the first thing that she's really posted like that. Now again, I do think they look very fantastical if you have the eye to kind of recognize that, you know, these are kind of the tropes that exist in this particular type of BDSM pornography. It looks like BDSM porn, not like something that really happens or that's like real rape, right? Um, especially again with these first set of images. Yes, safe words are important. Negotiation is important. I'm assuming by therapy, this person is referring to the aftercare that happens after the scene is over. Uh, and I mean, thinking it's normal is sort of interesting because on the one hand, like I can see the argument for why some people might consider it to be like, problematic to like have rape culture be normalized or whatever kind of that whole line but I think on the other hand like the, the side that I more fall on knowing that Bell is like a sex content creator I, I think it should be okay for people to have interests in unusual pornography like any sort of pornography that's not strictly vanilla like it is okay if you like those things. It is okay if you like the idea of being tied up and put in a van. It's okay if you like the idea of putting a handkerchief gag on your girlfriend. Again, the important part is consent, right? Making sure that all the people involved are consenting to this activity. And I think because Belle hasn't really talked about this publicly, obviously she's under no obligation to ed educate anyone, but because people 
are not actively looking for her as a BDSM content creator, knowing that she primarily got famous from young men following her on Instagram and kind of like drooling over her lewds. Like I'm sure a very large portion of her audience are probably still like young men, maybe even men in their, you know, teen years, people who are 16 and 17. And like, that's her account not being 18 plus only while posting sex content and probably selling pornography to a lot of minors is like, that's a whole other discussion, but I don't really have a lot of evidence for it other than like knowing who she got famous from, right? Like that's maybe a little bit of a different conversation, but I think it, it should be okay to say, hey, like, yeah, people have these particular kinks and like, they're not for everyone. They're not necessarily mainstream, but it also doesn't make you a bad person if you like them. And I think maybe a simple solution for Belle, and I didn't see that she posted this and maybe she did, would have been something to the effect of like, this was a really amazing photo shoot. I had such a fun time. You know, we had a lot of discussions about it beforehand, like kind of just briefly touching on the 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 background that went into creating this because when you watch a lot of stuff from like kink.com for example or other bdsm porn manufacturers some of them specifically eliminate this because it kind of ruins the fantasy but a lot of them have a moment before they even get into the kink where they sit on a couch and they talk about what's going to happen and the model the actress whoever is participating in it confirms you know I'm really into this. I want this to happen. Maybe I'm nervous about it. Maybe ooh, this is like my, my first time and like, I don't know what's going to happen. But, you know, they have a very clear moment where they establish consent before they get into the porn, right? So there's less of that doubt about like, ooh, is this like actress tricked into doing this? Did she want this to happen? And like, because that's in there, it's a lot easier to like purposely mistake it as like, oh, this is just rape right? Because you have, oh no, this, they, they, they really clearly established everything they wanted to have happen in this particular shoot before anything went on. We know that the model has a safe word. We know that they did X, Y, Z thing to prepare for this. Like all of that is good. And some of them even include moments of aftercare that you can see at the end or as a separate video, right? Or, or maybe even something in the description, you know, like Again, so easy, so many tiny little solutions. I think Belle could have avoided a lot of these problems, but I also think that people probably would have found a way to be mad at this, <laughs> even if she had did all of those things because of the way that these images look, right? And I know a lot of my fellow content creators like Cat Black and Brittany Simon, right? Like we have all talked about kind of the trouble with like kink going mainstream it's not really meant to go mainstream. It's it's not really meant to get popular because it is very difficult for people to understand the psychology of a lot of this, to understand why people would genuinely enjoy it. And a lot of people are just never gonna get it. So when you have like a two million follower Twitter account or whatever posting stuff like this that isn't a BDSM account, like people are gonna be like, what the? what the heck's going on here? You know, like this is wrong. This is, this is rape culture. And there's always going to be people, no matter what arguments you make, they, they don't care if both people are consenting. They don't, they don't care if you have aftercare or safe words. They are just going to say, this is wrong. Nobody should do this. This reminds me of my sexual assault. This is promoting rape. This is wrong. This is bad. Nobody should ever do that. That is an extreme take. But as we can see from the Twitter comment section, a lot of people have that particular take. And I don't necessarily, again, I can completely sympathize, empathize with those people that either know people that have experienced things like this, that generally don't want to promote this kind of culture or that have gone through those things themselves and just it is horribly traumatic for them to see these images. And and I, I don't want to say that anybody should have, you know, any kind of particular reaction one way or the other. I, I think if you're disgusted by it, that's totally okay. And I think you should have had the option to not engage in this if you didn't want to. And that's why throughout the course of this video, I haven't been showing specific usernames or talking about specific people as much as I can because I would imagine they would not appreciate being shown and talked about in a BDSM video on a BDSM channel. So again, super easy to not include people that don't want to be included, to actively try and exclude as many people as possible. Would it have gone viral if she maybe had a little bit of an error in that? Would we be talking about this today? Probably not. And I think Belle just maybe misprioritized responsibility as a content creator versus making money. And I hope that as she goes forward in the future, 
she will see that she can be really successful, that she can still make a lot of money while acting in a responsible way. And it's not unnecessarily restricting her freedom to do things like trigger warnings, or maybe to have like a separate like after dark Twitter account where all the really hardcore stuff goes on or to have a disclaimer in her bio or just a pinned comment at the top of her profile that says like, hey, the hardcore shit is happening now. Like you've been warned. Like I think as she, becomes older, as she gets more experience in this particular line of work, she will kind of understand more what the norms are. And I, I hope that in the future, she can be a better representation of the kink community where she really does keep consent at the forefront. Because I think maybe the point that Belle has really missed here is that while she consented to doing these things, her boyfriend consented to it, all of that, when you are a public profile with so much attention on you constantly where you haven't done things like this before like it's almost kind of like doing kink in public like you're on a public twitter account that doesn't to my knowledge outside of now there's a warning for sensitive content like when it's so easy for somebody to accidentally see it and i'm sure a lot of people had it pop up on their timeline not even knowing who bell was were just like what the freak is this and especially because it was trending on twitter you know a lot of people saw it that probably didn't intend to like you need to take reasonable precautions to i think just be a good citizen to be a good representation and i think if this is your career if you're gonna make bdsm content like your primary thing when you are so popular with so many people outside of kink like yeah i'm sorry i think you have a little bit of a higher duty than most of us to kind of make sure that people accidentally aren't seeing what they don't want to see because you just have so much of a wider audience than most bdsm focused people who make pornography or people who post like lewd and sexualized content would Anyways, this video <laughs> is gonna be really, really long, but I do think it is an important discussion. I don't normally really do like super hot, quick takes on stuff like this. So if you guys have your own thoughts, if you think I skipped over anything, please let me know. I'm sure there's elements of this conversation I'm missing. I know I really tried to find commentary from like dominatrixes or other sex workers people who have experience doing bdsm as like a content creator in this vein i try to find opinions from them on twitter but because this is such a big thing and those types of accounts are so often suppressed i really struggle to find anything like i couldn't find anybody to to really get a perspective from so if you have any of those perspectives please share with me because i think that's maybe an element of this conversation is is missing you know i tried to represent you know the somebody in the bdsm community side of this i think as well you know somebody who's a sex worker somebody who's like a professional dominatrix i think having that perspective as well could be really really helpful and again i think there's so many different elements of of conversations in here so and it was really long so i'll just kind of quickly summarize my thoughts right now i think belle delphine is primarily known as a troll she's definitely transitioned over the last month or so into making hardcore pornography when that was not originally her thing i think she maybe overstepped her bounds a little bit here when it came to posting this content without inadequate warning because she has blind spots due to her inexperience with this overall as well as the fact that she is just young and probably doesn't have a lot of real life bdsm experience to begin with and isn't familiar with our our norms and what accounts like this would or should typically do to make sure that people who don't want to see it don't see it i think there is a lot of valid criticism in some of the comments i think some of them overstep things too far i don't think that she's promoting pedophilia i don't think that she was trying to look younger on purpose i empathize as somebody with a similar body type that a lot of people see things that way but it is absolutely not intended simply because you know you don't have wide hips or a lot of boobage to work with you know and i think that there is valid criticism specifically when it comes to you know hey I didn't want to see this. I saw this anyways. You didn't take enough responsibility to make sure that on a public platform of this size, people didn't see things that they didn't want to see. And I think the conversation about this promoting rape and things like that is very complicated. And I do not believe from any of the research that I've read that simply viewing or watching BDSM pornography makes somebody more likely to act in a violent way towards women. However, because of the age of the people that Belle generally got famous from, there is more of a risk that things like this could be 
misconstrued in a way that she doesn't intend and isn't aware of because she's not consciously considering these things when she posts her content. She is simply kind of maintaining her typical troll, trying to get on trending thing that she's been doing for years that has worked really, really well for her. And then I just, again, I think she has a lot of opportunities for growth as long as she can admit a mistake. So that's a quick summary of all of my thoughts. If you guys have your own, if you have anything else like this you'd like me to talk about, or if you think I should make a follow-up video about any of these subjects or concepts because there was a lot in here today, please let me know. And that is everything. If you enjoyed this, if you want to see more from me, please do subscribe and make videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and BDSM related content. And if you want to support this channel, the best way you can do that is through Patreon. I have a link to that down in the description box below. If you want to check that out again, please, please do. I have tons of exclusive content and rewards, a discord chat, monthly photo shoots, extra videos. And we also are going to be doing a movie night. So go ahead and look at that if you haven't already. If you already support me over there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you guys next time, I hope you have a great Easter day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.